Good afternoon, good evening. My name is Skip Rutherford. I'm Dean of the Clinton School. Welcome to another in a series of our programs. Nicolai de Pippa does a great job in bringing over 100 programs that are free and open to the public, and I am grateful for his work. Today, tonight, uh, we have uh, a discussion on an interesting, intriguing uh, campaign called Love Little Rock. And while there are several people who have been involved in the effort, three who uh, played instrumental roles uh, have agreed to, uh, to, to be here and, and visit with us. I'm going to start um, by asking a few questions, and then we'll hopefully open it up to the public. Millie Ward is the president of Stone Ward. Um, Jay Cheshire is the president and CEO of the Little Rock Regional Chamber of Commerce and Mark Stodla is the mayor of Little Rock. So all three uh, have played very big roles in the development of this city, certainly in the development of downtown Little Rock, uh, and with Love Little Rock. So first question, panel, on Love Little Rock, and then we'll give you, then we got three or four more, then we'll give you plenty of time to make any other comments you want, and then we'll open it up. My first question is, how and when did the concept originate? How did it go from an idea stage to implementation? And who did what? <laughs> so. Do you want us to start at the very beginning? The question is, well, you can go anyway. You know, how and when did the concept originate? How did it go from the idea stage to implementation, and who did what? So before we get to the meeting that the mayor is going to talk about, um, when, when the Amazon project was first made public, uh, the mayor actually was my second phone call. The first phone call was from my daughter, who wanted to know if we were going to land Amazon. And I smiled and said, uh, honey, I'm not real sure that, that we're a candidate for that, but we're going to do everything that we can to do so. Um, the second phone call, literally minutes later, was from the mayor, where we began to talk about the specifics regarding the project. And I was out of the state at the time. I was actually in, in uh, Michigan. And I said, uh, this was on a Thursday, if memory serves me correct. And I said, let me get back to town. Let's take a look at the actual RFP required information, and then we'll go from there. So that everyone understands we get these requests for proposals on um, a regular basis. This is one of the few times that it's ever been a public request for proposal. In fact, the last one, Mayor, that I can think of that was really this public was the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame project that eventually landed in Cleveland. And so most of the times when we're, when we're getting these requests for proposals, it's all under the... Um, the, the, the guise of a confidentiality agreement that we can't really talk about. So the cool thing about this one was everybody got to see it. And so that led to the conversation with the mayor who obviously was getting requests for, uh, or I should say offers for help from places and people from all across the city and the state that then led to the meeting. Mayor, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had gotten several comments, calls from a variety of people in the community um, and different, I mean, real estate professionals, people in economic development circles, uh, all kinds of folks that um, love the city and thought that uh, we would be a great place to put, put Amazon. So I, I did call Jay and he was out of town and I said, well, hey, what do you think about this? And he said, well, we, we need to look at the RFP, but we need to, we need to temper people's expectations. And, um, and, uh, and then I, we had a second phone call. And uh, in that second phone call, my, I came away from it saying, well, we're gonna, we don't really meet all of the technical requirements, but we, you know, and I'd looked at the RP by then and it said, well, you know, here's what we prefer. Uh, the, the issue of, uh, of population, we could put three MSAs together with Hot Springs and Pine Bluff and come up with a million two. Obviously, we didn't have an international airport, but if you're going to put 50,000 people here, I know because we have plans at the airport to do an international airport, we could by golly get an international airport. So anyway, I'm, I'm pretty exuberant about all this, and I happened to be in China at the time lecturing about renaissance of cities and things like that and economic development. And so I put out a, 
I put out a little Facebook post and a little tweet that that um, that took off and and uh, uh, you and Donald got Trump. things very excited. What you and Donald Trump? Yeah, that's right. I did. It's probably really late at night too. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but in any event, so uh, in the meantime, I got all these people offering help, and so we, uh, I put together a list, and uh, we had people from our, our universities, our, our EIT engineering uh, and, and related uh, sciences, uh, our people at the Tech Park, a variety of different organizations, and all came. A very interesting group of people uh, that typically I don't know that in a pure economic development recruiting fashion would always be at the table. And I think that's been one of the great benefits that we've seen from this is that we have now been able to assemble some information and some uh, allies that, that uh, might not otherwise be targeted as much as, as this has allowed us to do. We put together a group, there were about 20, 25 people, so a lot of them couldn't make it. I mean, we had everybody that, from Richard Howe at uh, Anuvo to Charles Morgan to uh, the people at, uh, UA, at UA Little Rock uh, and uh, UCA, all offering to provide whatever whatever process they could that would help to enhance our, our consideration. In the course of all of that, we had some pretty uh, detailed discussions about whether or not realistically we were going to be in the running. We already by this time knew that I think our friends in Memphis were putting up $60 million in city money. Uh, other cities were putting up millions of dollars and millions of dollars, and we knew that we didn't have that kind of uh, opportunity to really generate that kind of uh, money. Uh, and so we looked at it pretty realistically and uh, ultimately decided that maybe there's some way that we could get the attention of Amazon and perhaps the, the country uh, and other economic developers uh, to um, give us some attention. And um, we, we hammered out on a couple different meetings on this, and actually what happened was is uh, um, uh, one of our players. Um, uh, I'll take it from there. So well, I'm trying in, to... in the first meeting, in the, in the first meeting, um, a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Siemens from CDI Contractors uh, was sitting there, and, and we were going through the, the, the criteria that the mayor just talked about. And oftentimes when we do this from an economic development perspective, if we don't fit the criteria, we just simply say, unfortunately, we don't fit this criteria. So we get these RFPs, we, we put it out, we either do or we don't, and we respond accordingly. Well, my thought was if we get all of these really smart people in the room and we read through this, um, even though our friends in Texas think of themselves as a whole other country, and while we fly there, that doesn't make our airport international. Um, <laughs> One million people in the MSA when we currently have 733,000 um, at best. Um, several different modes of mass transit already available to the site or to the office space. I mean, all of these things, obviously, we, we didn't, we had some of it, and we had some of it in big ways, but we didn't have all of it. And so in the midst of this meeting, um, we just like the, the character of the people in this room matches that of this entire community and region, it became a we're the little engine that can type conversation. And um, as, as we were getting through this information, um, recognizing that there were going to be all kinds of those proposals made to Amazon, and that in that process, those communities could thank themselves for making a proposal that wasn't responsive to what their requirements were, and they and Amazon would be the only ones uh, that would be able to see it. It was at that moment in time that we were, that Jonathan Seaman said, well, why don't we do something opposite of everybody? And we looked at him, and we kind of, the mayor and I were sitting next to each other, and we kind of looked at each other, and I said, that's brilliant. How about a Dear John letter? And people kind of looked at me like I was nuts and went back to the little engine that, 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 that could scenario. But from that meeting, we agreed that we would catalog everything that they were looking for. We already had a lot of this in process anyway as we were kicking back up our economic development marketing program from uh, the, the results of the lawsuit and the fact that we hadn't marketed for three, three plus years. And so we were moving forward with Millie and her team on some public relations with Marla and the Aristotle team on some, some website enhancements. And so 
um, the mayor thought it was a great idea to catalog everything, but then reach out to, to Millie and her team and say, what if? Think about this. This is a little bit different process, and it would have to be done really well for it to work, but we might end up take, taking a project that we don't qualify for and getting the attention not only of them, but so many others that we do qualify for in the process. And so from that, after the meeting, picked up the phone and called Millie and I said, you know, the mayor and I, we've just finished this meeting. Here are, what, here are some of the things that we're thinking. You're the creative folks. Please work with this and get back to us. Oh, by the way, the deadline is X. And it was hours. <laughs> and so we ended up coming back and, and we said we, we had the second meeting scheduled of the, the group that the mayor's talking about. Um, but I will kind of flip it over to, to Millie because, um, Skip, to, your, to answer your question, it was in that first meeting that lasted about two and a half hours that the thought process of why, why, why don't we do something completely different than everyone else will that really spawned the idea of what became the Love Little Rock campaign. Millie? So when Jay called, he said, do you think this is to do something different? goes against the grain. What do you think? I think it could be a good idea. And I said, I think it could be a really good idea too. I think it could be really a lot of fun to work on. Let us get our team together. So we got our team together. We basically, I told, I think that was on a Friday and I said, I'd get back to you on Monday. So I assembled a team of volunteers at Stone Ward and said, anybody who will, who would like to come and brainstorm about this on a Sunday afternoon, spend three hours. Uh, I'd love to have you and we'll see where we end up. So that's what we did. So we had 20 plus people that came on their own time on Sunday afternoon to brainstorm. And uh, we put, I told somebody the other day, I think we put more than 200 ideas on the wall on our whiteboard at the agency. And uh, we had all kinds of crazy ideas. We had much crazier ideas than an ad in the Washington Post. Um, but we put them all down and decided then to do some filtering on that Sunday evening and Monday. And by the time we were able to get in front of Jay and his group, we had, well, actually Jay first, we had narrowed it down to a strategy that basically said on, I mean, we money was limited. We did need to be economical about our ideas. So we said we thought we could run one ad in the Washington Post. And that was owned by Jeff Bezos. We knew that. And possibly get his attention in others. And then we could put a lot of social around it. We talked about what that would be. And then we could do some crazy things like fly a banner over Seattle that has something from the ad in it. We sort of went through all that and we basically read the ad to Jay. I was leaving, I was about to get on an airplane and we read the ad to Jay and Jay said, we read two ads actually, we had a couple of different approaches and uh, then we called the mayor and we read him the ads and both of them said they really liked the love letter idea and they really liked the, the ad. and. Uh, so they called their committee together <laughs> and had another meeting and pre we presented Lucy. it. Yes, Lucy and Bill Brickshaw came and we presented to that whole committee. And what is incredible to me about this story is that yes, was it a different idea to write a love letter type communication? Yes, that was a great idea. Uh, to run it in the Washington Post, that was kind of brave. Um, and really talk about how we could get social attention around it and make it go viral. I mean, what are the ways that we could do that? All that was, but to give that to a committee of 20 plus business leaders and have everybody in the room say yes, is pretty incredible. I think it says so much about our city. The last line of the ad says something about if you want, of the ad, to, of the letter says if you want to come and join a place where there are dreamers and doers and builders, 
then, you know, Little Rock might be a place. All those people in that room were brave enough to say, yeah, let's do something different. And they all had great suggestions. I mean, as you can possibly imagine with any advertising effort, the very first thing that's drafted is never the thing that ends up being the thing that is finished. It requires, Larry and I have said this from the beginning of our agency, like advertising can be no greater than the client and it requires a true collaboration and that's what that was. So some of the business leaders had some suggestions about the letter itself and we went back to our team and we all, you know, we, we made some revisions to try to get it as right as we could. Um, and we did. It was good. It turned out good. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, I was just looking for the first email. Well, not it's not the very first one I got, but the one from uh, the uh, uh, person who actually said, "Why don't we just do the opposite?" Which was Jonathan Siemens, and he says, "Hey, Mayor, if you want to think big, creative, and out of the box, put me on as part of your team." Cheers, Jonathan. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so um, we 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 uh, thank you for the insight and the story and 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 and. and um, and Jonathan Seaman's role in that, he that important. So from doing the ad in the Washington Post, who orchestrated the, 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 the airplane over Seattle? Who had that work? Who did that? So I, I think we need to take a half a step back okay. first, uh, because we, we talked about the, the group of 25, um, and, and, and the group of 25, um, some with raised eyebrows thought, you know, this could work. Um, others we're passionate about that it would work. Um, but it's, it's one thing to have that group of people um, agree to the framework because we didn't, we, we just kind of knew what we were going to do and we had the letter, but we didn't have the, the, the full project right. wrapped around that. Um, and the, the next step, Skip, was to then take this process and put numbers to it, which um, Millie and her team uh, with Larry and, and Lucy and the whole crew went back and put numbers around what this could look like. And from the perspective of, of the, the, the campaign and, and the why of the, the, the digital and the modern versus the analog, I'll let Millie talk about that in just a second. But then from that, we had to very quickly move in front of the Chamber Executive Committee with this idea and a price tag. Um, and as you might well imagine, a full-page ad in the Washington Post is pretty darn expensive. Um, and then you had all of this other, but you also had what I thought was an amazing team at Stone Ward and at Aristotle working on this. But even more important, the thing that I think came out of this as we started down that process was for people to realize that it could be much more than just a branding campaign, a new economic development marketing campaign. It could be a campaign where we, for the first time in my, in my history in economic development of 25 plus years, the first time where we could reach out to the people of Little Rock and Central Arkansas and have them participate in this and be proud of the fact that they also love Little Rock. So it was not only an economic development marketing and branding opportunity that if it worked would be amazingly good, as, as you'll hear in a few minutes, but at the same time give the people of Little Rock and Central Arkansas a way to be a part of telling the world why they love Little Rock and why, why other folks should come here and be a part of that as well. The executive committee, uh, without batting an eye, said, this does have risk, but let's go do it. And, and so I think uh, they've not really been talked about a whole lot through this process, but they were very brave to say, yes, we'll let you go and spend these hard-earned dollars uh, from an economic development, marketing, and branding perspective on something that kind of sounded way off the wall to a lot of people, but then moved forward from there. Yeah, and let me let me respond on that, Jay, in terms of that, because one of the criticisms of this thing, and again, I'm not taking sides, I'm just trying to moderate fairly here. One of the criticisms of this was the cost. Mm -hmm. So can you address how much did it cost and where did the money come from? I can address the fact that it came from the economic development marketing budget okay. of the Little Rock Regional Chamber of Commerce. We have a marketing budget 
where we're going out not only across the country but across the world marketing um, Little Rock and the Metro Little Rock region to the outside um, to the outside world. And so we don't. Uh, and and I, I will I will take you back to Chelsea at the Democrat Gazette when we were, when we were presenting the uh, new contract in front of the city board back early in the year, I made the statement about what Oklahoma City spent on economic development marketing. Chelsea took that information, called the Oklahoma City Chamber the very next day, and asked them to confirm the number that I had given. Their response was, we don't give out that information from a public perspective. And Chelsea uh, and I had a conversation later where she obviously wasn't happy about it. And I, I actually apologized to her because I said, you know, I shouldn't have said that in that way because if some newspaper or, or other reporter from Oklahoma City were to call us and ask us what we're spending on an economic development marketing campaign, I would have given the same answer because we're in competition with them just as they're in competition right. with us. So while we won't divulge what that number was specifically or exactly um, how we came to that number, we will say that it was um, a lot of money that the, the, the executive committee of the Chamber of Commerce agreed to spend recognizing that they thought it would be a great way for Little Rock to publicly get back out in a positive light across the world. Okay. Um, yeah. But I, I think you can add to that that you know the, the, the marketing budget that they have for, the, for, for economic development is much larger, much, much, much larger than just the city's contribution. Oh, yeah. it's, it's several hundred thousand dollars. There are businesses and industry in this community support it privately, and that's the success that any economic development city has to have, is it's a combination of, of support, both public and private, and the private substantially outweighs, dollar-wise, the amount of public support, and I think that's a pretty fair and, and statement. And to that point, I should, have, I should have mentioned that. So from an economic development um, budget perspective, it's approximately 30, 35 percent public contracts beyond the city and, and those others, and then approximately 70% private funds that we raise every year um, to do just that specific effort. Okay, the, the other, the other, another criticism, I, again, and thank you for, for, for that answer, and I may press you a little harder before we get through when, we, when, when you tell me how, how much benefit it was, because I, uh, but, but the, the other criticism was that Many Little Rock residents learned about it from someone texting or emailing them about an ad in the Washington Post. So I understand the committee of 25, and I understand I understand the the, the economic development planning and and all that. Uh, what was that intentional to do as a surprise? And and again, um, because people had, sort of had part of the story, but had half the story. And, I, and I'll use the example that I had. Uh, you know, I, I believe uh, uh, it was uh, my first knowledge of it was an email from Jonathan Martin of the New York Times. Well, it, who, it who, was. Who, I'm bad. I know. I, I, so I, 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 I know. It, no, it was Who, by the way, liked the campaign and said, <laughs> this is really cool or something to that effect. And I thought, what in the world is he talking about? Well, it was intentional. In fact, the, the ability to keep 25 people from saying anything about it over the course of two and a half, three weeks was pretty amazing unto itself. And then with the executive committee Actually, being brought into it. Actually, it was only nine it, days, Mayor. Okay, well, well there were people who had been talking but about still, it. Still, it's hard. Larry Stone says, but, Ben Franklin says, that three can keep a secret when two are dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, the it wisdom was intentional. Of Larry Stone. And, I, mean, the <laughs> I mean, the element of surprise was very important and because we, we, we were afraid somebody else might steal the idea, frankly. Okay. And, and, and so the, it was quite intentional, and um, uh, obviously it's an economic development campaign. Um, uh, the fact that it woke everybody up in a surprising way, I think, has been really exciting in terms of the response. In fact, you know, the only negative comments that I have ever received on this have to be from local people who I think have a very narrow awareness of, of first of all, economic development marketing number one, and advertising, number two. Uh, most of the people I run into uh, think it was, uh, and I give Millie and, and the team all the credit for this, was, was brilliant. And 
I were, uh, you know, any, I talked to mayors and people all over the country, and they, they thought it was a stroke of genius. So, well, and the only, the only other thing I was going to say is part of the strategy was to hijack Amazon's day. Amazon, Amazon created the opportunity because right. they said, we're going to do this unconventional RFP. We're going to make it public. We're going to announce the deadline day way ahead, October 19th. Everybody in the country is going to know it. And for a week prior to that, there were news stories in media outlets across the country about towns renaming themselves Amazon if they would get it and gigantic boxes being placed all over major cities. I mean, people were doing all kinds of stunts. Yeah. So it was important for ours to be a the surprise, the cactus. I don't even know the cactus. Oh, they sent a cactus. Oh, right. That's right. Somebody sent a gigantic a huge cactus. Huge gigantic cactus. Yeah. And, and skip to your... To, you know, to the question and, and the why of the, the surprise. Um, the first issue, obviously, was we didn't want, we, the last thing we wanted was someone else to, to do this. We were afraid that someone else would do this so that it would look like there was more than one. We, we recognized that, and I think I was quoted at one point of, of saying that, you know, our hope in the end was there will be two cities recalled and remembered from this process, the city that wins and Little Rock. And, and so our goal um, early on, I think it was Forbes or Fortune, I'm not real sure which, I think it was Fortune maybe first, that early on in the day, so understand that the, everything stemmed from the Washington Post being printed that day with the full page ad and the letter. Um, you know, as I laughingly told Millie, I've had lots of experience in relational breakups being broken up with. Uh, and, and, and so I got that part of it. But then, I, I, you know, I, I remembered a, uh, a, a current U.S. senator from Minnesota who did a phenomenal Saturday Night Life skit, Stuart Smalley, you know, looking into the mirror and, you know, going through all of this and then saying, and doggone it, people like me, you know? And so that's what led to the idea of a video, not only reading yourself the letter it, and, and what its words were, but having someone or a group of someone's, in this case, actually uh, create a, an amazing video. And it, it's hard to believe all of this happened in nine days and to get somebody like Graham Gordy who agreed, I mean, this is one of Hollywood's biggest writers. Yeah. Which is a thank you to the Arkansas Cinema Society right. and Catherine Tucker, who said immediately, we'll do everything we can help and spend her weekend tracking Graham, Graham and a down. couple of others right. down. And so when you, when you look at all of, all of that, the element of surprise, beginning with the ad, that then was surrounded by the press conference and the social media and then the, the paid digital media, all with the goal of getting significant earned media across the country and the world. It all had to start with that element of surprise with the Washington Post ad. Okay, the other thing I want to ask, and, 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 and I obviously feel your pain on this issue based on this little project that I was involved with, part of which we're in here right now, is... Uh, <laughs> Um, over the course of that project, there was significant local criticism uh, of why are you going east of the interstate? Why are you building a modern building that looks like a double wide on stilts? And why are you doing, uh, you know, all the criticism and that, that, it, that it wouldn't be good for Little Rock and all that stuff. There was very little criticism nationally or internationally. Most of that was praise of what a great thing a presidential library is for a city, what a great school of public service would be, those kinds of things. So can you talk about, I mean, you know, again, I know you received um, a, a lot of support locally, but can you talk about the local criticism and can you cite any companies or anybody that, that really, you know, spoke out against it or came to you uh, either publicly or privately and said this is the worst idea because I could give you a whole list on the Clinton Library if you want to exchange names. <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll start off on that. You know, I received some emails um, uh, individually, um, uh, some texts, some 
um, um, instant messenger, messengers. You know, people hide behind that a little bit easier than they do trying to come up to you. I, I find it interesting. And some of it was really rude. I mean, truly, truly over the box uh, rude, in my opinion. Uh, and basically, it just, I mean, people, people didn't bother to go and check the new website. You know, if they'd have checked the new website, if they'd have read the letter a little bit more carefully about say, hey, you know, come back Amazon maybe in the future and take a look at us. We got some really special things going on here. And then it, it cites them over to the, to the website. If they'd have taken the effort to do that, I think they would have begun to understand what the whole concept was. But so fundamentally, I think there are just some people locally primarily who just simply didn't get it and felt like we were talking about ourselves being small and, and inferior, which is totally the opposite of what the whole message was. It was about how special we are and how much of a unique opportunity there is for people who want to come and find out about us. And I, so. I think from, from the perspective of the day, um, the Washington Post ad hits. And it began to get a little bit of, of notice at the national level. Um, fast forward uh, an hour and a half or so when we have the press conference at the tech park. And I can tell you, standing there with the mayor and with, with Millie and, and her team and Marla and her team, the initial questions from the local media was just that, neg negativity. Um, and it was, it was almost a, um, an opportunity to help them understand what this really was. It wasn't a mayor going back on his word about uh, an Amazon project. It was the best way we could get Amazon's attention, number one, but at the same time use their project to get the attention of thousands of other companies with projects that we fit their criteria today. And it, it really, it seemed to, the tide seemed to stem a bit locally and begin to turn the, the other direction early in the afternoon when a lot of these national publications uh, were coming out and saying what a brilliant move by a little city in Arkansas that didn't qualify for this project but now has gotten and captured the attention of, of all, not only Amazon, but all of these other um, companies and, and, and projects across the country. So I think in the middle of the afternoon, the, the, the tenor began to change of the questions that I was getting from um, local media. And obviously, I had gotten significant questions from the national media at that point. So that by the time we got into the five o'clock news cycle, some of that was already in, in, in the can, so to speak. And, and there were folks who didn't like it. They didn't like that they, they didn't know about it beforehand. They didn't like it for whatever reason. And as, um, as, as we talked that day, the worst thing that could have happened in this whole process would have been for no one to talk about it. <laughs> that would have been the absolute worst thing. And so recognizing that you know, some people loved it, some people didn't, thankfully the vast majority did, that's okay. That's what this is all about. It's how do we capture the attention of people? Because I, I, I say this often in our economic development presentations, it's not that we, in fact I should say it this way, we in Arkansas oftentimes think that the outside world thinks badly about us when in reality, they're not thinking of us unless we give them a reason to. And so this was the best opportunity that we had for a really small amount of money in the overall scheme of things to take, to take a step forward into the public eye in the country and say, hey, whether you're Amazon or someone else, come take a look. Come take a look at what makes Little Rock a great place. Yes, we have issues. Yes, here are things that we're doing to try to positively impact those issues. But if we don't get you to take a second and take a look, then you'll never come. Well, and just from a, a marketing standpoint, sure. I think it's important to say that the two most important brand measurements that you can do for any brand are awareness. People have to 
be aware of who you are before they can become interested in you or you become a lead. And then the second one is brand likability. People have to like a brand. Brands are emotional. They're not intellectual. They're spaces in a consumer's mind. So, you know, what Love Little Rock did for Little Rock's economic development brand is it made a lot of people aware. I mean, 1.5 billion impressions and, uh, and 200, let's see, what is it? Two million dollars in advertising value. It made a lot of people aware of Little Rock. But based on the, all the measurement that we have, it also made Little Rock a likable brand to 95% of those Yeah, and people. I want you to go into more detail on that, but Maris, I want you to go well, into I was more. Gonna say about the emotional issue, and, and it is, it's, 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 a, it's an emotional issue much, actually much bigger than just economic development. Uh, I see the t-shirts and we got people asking us for t-shirts that have nothing to do with economic development. And that's why, it's because they love Little Rock and they want to promote Little Rock because that's where they like to live, they like what they you know, they like their neighborhoods, they like the people they associate with. So it's really much, much bigger. And that emotional touch is so critical to get people to react and to, and to do something positive. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm really excited about, about that concept. I think it's a, a, a byproduct of an economic development campaign that's much bigger and going to be much more important to the city in the long run. So, Millie, you talked about the impressions, the, 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 the value of, of the exposure uh, and the emotional thing of, you know, what, um, what do you see, uh, you know, again, hard to put a dollar figure on that, but, but so what, what do you see going forward with Love Little Rock? Well, we, I, I think, first of all, we will be working with Jay and his team on an economic development campaign that will use this as a jumping off point that is targeted to influencers and stakeholders that can make decisions to bring projects to our city or to expand their businesses that are currently here. I mean, any of that. I think what the mayor is saying about Love Little Rock as a campaign that all of us can embrace and build as a pride campaign for our city is equally powerful. And that's what I hope will happen. I hope that uh, Love Little Rock can become a mantra for everyone. I, I told somebody that first day at the press conference, just imagine, we, there, Love Little Rock has a Facebook page, Love Little Rock has a Twitter feed, Love Little Rock has an Instagram. Just imagine if every organization in the city who do good things every day just shared it and put hashtag love little rock we would have in a matter of a month we would have the most robust product for anyone to come and see for themselves all the positive things that are going on in our city i, I hope people will do that i hope that the viral nature of love little rock that's what's great about the media environment as it currently exists. I mean, the viral nature of it allows all of us to take what we're doing already and, and post it to Love Little Rock and celebrate it with that hashtag. I mean, I think that has a huge value over time. You know, we have people who are willing to put it on their marquees. We'd love that. We have a kit for that. We have people who are willing to uh, put it inside their companies. We'd love that. We have a kit for that. I mean, we have a lot of ways that people in Little Rock and companies in Little Rock can take Love Little Rock and leverage it back to the things that you're doing because you do love Little Rock. And I think, um, you know, going back to the origin of why we did this, um, obviously it was for, from an economic development branding perspective. And as I said earlier, uh, this is the first time in my 25 years in economic development that we've been able to use the community to be part of something that was a quote economic development campaign. Because most of the time we're targeting a very small group of folks across the world that are called site location consultants that are hired by these companies um, to actually look for their best site for an expansion, a new location, or what have you. And so 
oftentimes we're not using the quote consumer media to do that marketing. We're doing that marketing in a, in a very targeted way. And so what this has allowed us to do is through the consumer media, capture the attention of them and their clients while now allowing us the opportunity to begin to feed them the love Little Rock and the 10 reasons why and, and did you know this about why we love Little Rock so that we can capture a lot of those folks who came to that website and then feed back into their social media feeds things about why they should take another look at Little Rock. So it truly is an economic development marketing campaign that's being done with technology today that maybe didn't exist uh, five years ago that then allows us to take the consumer piece and play off of that and keep it alive through our Convention and Visitors Bureau or keep it alive through the Love Little Rock hashtags that companies can use in recruiting new talent to the state or our local universities can use to recruit new students to their specific college or university. So it can be used in so many different ways, but we will use it specifically to get to that small group of people. You know, I've, I've, I've said this in the, in, in the past, I don't believe in reincarnation, but if I did, and if I had the opportunity to come back as anything. You'd come back as Mark Stodola. Nope. <laughs> It wouldn't be the mayor of, it wouldn't be the Pope, it wouldn't be the president. I'd want to come back as a site location consultant. Why? First of all, they think they're God. And secondly, they get treated like they're God. And they're a really difficult group of people to get their attention for this amount of time, much less this amount of time. This morning, we had two site location consultants in town with an international prospect for five hours. That is an eternity in a site location consultant's daily life. And so the ability to capture their attention, have them smile, have them say whether they liked it or not, we, got, we, we gave them a reason to think about Little Rock, puts us on the map for okay, projects. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question on the site location people. Okay. Did you, and this could be maybe more to Millie, or, or did you do a direct in, in addition to the overall consumer thing, did you do a direct outreach to the site location people? Did you have a targeted campaign to them? And, yes. And, 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 well, and how did you do that? What did you we, do? We did it through technology, Skip, okay. um, focused on New York, Chicago, and Atlanta, okay. along with Dallas, because the site location consultants that we typically are working with are from one of those areas. And so uh, through technology, we were able to target them with not only the ad itself, but the digital media piece that surrounded it. And I wonder if Gretchen is doing the same thing, uh, do you know, on, on LRCVB uh, to target prospective uh, conventions and meetings? Do, do we know? I, I, Gretchen and I have talked well, about using this jointly going forward. Obviously, um, uh, she was she knew what we were doing because we wanted her to to be a part of not only the day itself but also what follows that day. So, what she's going to do with that going forward, I'm not real sure, but I do know that she plans. And to And then use one it. other question I want to ask Millie: the the the, the, the criticism. I mean, and again, you got to understand. It's okay. I'm, I'm used to getting. It's get, okay. I, 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 I am I, too. I'm used I, to I'm, criticism. I'm, 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 battered on this. So it, it, I'm, I'm, and I, anybody that does a bold project, you, you throw yourself out there. So I, I, yeah, I, you all have my respect. Um, but, but where I heard the most criticism was from the 25 to 40 age crowd. Um, you know, the young professionals, not all, but that's when, when people said, something to me from the 25 to, there was a very mixed feeling among that group. What, have you done any, any analysis or anything about saying where, where this played the best, where it played the worst? And again, these are just local people in Little Rock, again. We have not done any formal analysis, okay. Okay. no. <laughs> okay. There's not been time for that. But I will say that we have a lot of people in that age group that work in our agency, and they were all no, very no, positive I, and, and about I'm not, it. I, and I do not mean so to I say... So I think your information could be anecdotal. Well, it is anecdotal. <laughs> it's totally anecdotal. Not statistical. No, I agree. That's why I, that's, that's why I ask you that question. 
uh, and your pretty good response. But, but to that point, I think uh, it's important to note that we had a war room of sorts going on at the tech park um, that, that was planned that we invited anybody and everyone to come be a part of, and the, the age group that you're talking about was way, way overrepresented. In spades, in okay. in spades. And were there all day long. And, and, and I, you know, it's interesting, since I travel a lot, a lot of times I'll read something, and then I'll read what the comments are below whatever the article, <coughs> whether Noel wrote it or, or whatever. Um, it was interesting to me, and maybe, I'm the only one that saw this, but it was interesting to me that one of the first Democrat Gazette articles written about what was happening had an initial negative comment that literally somebody or some groups of somebodies came forward in that banter and explained to them why this was good for the city, why this was trying to attract more creatives and, and, and folks to this community to not only grow our own from within, but to attract more. And I think that's the first time I've seen that in, in Well, the concern country. they well, raised I, to me... I, and, think it's, well, I think it's also very important to say that the, the news media, the local news media, has been very positive. I mean, they wrote business, they wrote the front page story on the value of the campaign and uh, several of the television stations have done wonderful features on it. Arkansas Business wrote a column. So we have had, the I would say the media, if you just measured the media locally, we have had a lot of positive media. And I think our local media have been very supportive by and large. Okay, so, and I'm, so I want to be go ahead, go ahead, clear Mark. on that. Well, I, I want to get back to one of, the, one of the focuses that people say, well, you know, well, you know, Amazon maybe didn't even look at the, the website or... Uh, you know, the whole process of Amazon yes, they going did. out. Well, I, 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 don't steal my thunder yet. Don't steal my thunder. Uh, so one of the, one of the thing, you know, the, the Amazon approach to this was very disruptive to the economic development world. I mean, most economic developers, you know, were pulling their hair out, just upset immensely with what they were doing to the status quo as it relates to economic development. And I think we need to recognize that this is a disruptor. And it's probably a disruptor in the future. And the ability for us to capitalize on that is really where some of the proof in the pudding is. And I, I, so I want, I want Millie to give you a little bit of the results of the, of the search or the lovelittlerock.org results on, on the companies that have clicked on our website to take a look at us. So Millie, if So you the would. wonderful thing about digital media is you track everything. Uh, and the lovelittlerock.org, this was actually the 24th, so there's been significant traffic since then, but uh, by that time, we had seen visits just, and this is not all, this is just a sampling, from Apple, Amazon, Boeing, Dell, Johnson & Johnson, KPMG, Deloitte, PwC, all those site consultants, site consultants. Ford Motor Company, and GM. Uh, just just a few on the list. And, and we had had almost 200 people download the, um, the document for the, All the ten reasons. reasons to love Little Rock, basically, the PDF. And I think it's also, um, you know, it's, it's one thing to be discussed and, and either lauded or, or denigrated in, in um, public forums, it's another thing to get message after message after message from my counterparts across the country who were either calling me the luckiest SOB they knew <laughs> or brilliant, and it had to have been somebody else's idea. <laughs> and well, it so, was. It was Jonathan Seaman. Exactly. It was exactly, Jonathan <laughs> Exactly. And, and, and which is why you give credit where credit's due. Um, but I, I think... The, the economic development community's response to it um, was equally um, effusive in terms of, wow, instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, or in some cases millions of dollars on their proposal that obviously we didn't touch with a candle, we got so much more attention for what we did, the way we did it, 
the right way, as, as Larry said, in a smart way. There's a difference in being a smart person and a smart ass. And, and, and I'm, that was a paraphrase, Larry. Um, and, and, so, and, and so, you know, the reality of that is, in a very smart, creative way, not only did we make them smile, but we made a whole lot of other people smile. And, and so, so that you know kind of the rest of the story, we did the digital, we, we did the print, we did the digital, we did the social, and the analog piece was flying the banner over the downtown Seattle campus. Um, and when Millie first said something to me about that, my thought was, oh man, I've seen that at the beach. And, you know, and my second thought was, how much is that gonna cost? Um, and so you know, I, I said, well, let's, let's think about that. And it got down to a go, no go. And it also got down to weather and they couldn't, they couldn't confirm that they would be able to fly it on that Thursday because of the weather. And I had to make a decision. It was going to be X amount of dollars regardless because we, they already had to print the banner. Um, and I said, well, if they can't fly on Thursday, then, you know, then what about Friday? Well, they're, they're going for Friday, but if Friday doesn't work, they can do it over the weekend. And, and we talked about it, and I said, you know, I don't want it flown over the weekend. Because over the weekend, you don't have the business community in downtown Seattle looking at this. And I, I really expected other people to do this. I really thought this would be something that other communities would do, which is why I wasn't enamored with it early on. Um, so fast forward, not only could it not fly Thursday, not only could it not fly Friday, um, it was Monday before it actually flew. By that point in time, everyone else had already done what they were going to do from a proposal perspective. And guess whose only little banner was flying over downtown Seattle? And guess how many hundreds of technology companies are in Seattle, not only because of Amazon, but also because of what else is there, who also need expansion facilities. And it, it created another fervor within the Seattle media that I really hadn't expected. And the next thing I know, we're getting phone calls and, and requests for media uh, interviews from the Seattle media, so much so even a local NPR program wanted to talk about why, why in the world would we on Monday fly this banner? <laughs> and it got as much attention in Seattle as anything else did. So this is, this is the great thing about that. Again, collaboration is the key. So Ben France, who were, is on the chamber team, said, I know there's one of the local newscasters, and I won't mention their name, but this person has some roots, some connections in the Seattle media community. So he said, I'll just ask her, our local person, to call the people she knows in the Seattle media community and let them know the banner's going to be flying. And she did that. So the banner flew on Monday, which was great because it bright gave sunlight. another reason for coverage and the bright sunlight. We have a great picture of it right by the Space Needle. Uh, and all of the broadcast outlets covered it, but in part because a broadcast person here was willing to put themselves out there with some of their friends and spread the word. Okay, so, Millie, let me ask you one Relationships, one no, of I, the three R's of PR. And, and, and I totally agree with you, and I think, I think uh, doing it on a flying uh, on a Monday, I mean, clearly, I mean, that, that was <laughs> turned out to be a, um, a, a brilliant stroke. But let me go back to the the, the, to, to that criticism of the 25 to 40 year old group and the only, and again, I know, I know that, I mean, it's probably a minor number, but I want to ask this question that was asked to me on three or four occasions. Do you think it sent a signal by us, you know, throwing a bone saying we're going to apply to Amazon and then throwing a bone that saying we're not, do you think it sent a signal to the 25 to 40 year old folks in Seattle, in Austin, in other places that Little Rock was not uh, engaged enough in technology to move the young, uh, the, the, uh, you know, creative class here. We, we, because we, we said we, we couldn't compete and we came back and did something unique. And I, I look, I think that the result numbers speak for themselves. I'd just like for you to, because, you know, you got a bunch of tech, 
tech people work with you, and I know them well, and I, so I have high respect. But did, was there a thought of this, this might send a signal that we're not big time yet? So I'll, I'll start on that um, because obviously with our Create Little Rock group and and the talent that we're constantly trying to um, attract and retain uh, beyond growing from within. So that go I go back to what Larry's you know the smart aleck versus smart ass piece. Um, the reality of that is. The people that in, in all those places you just named had no clue anybody said that we were going to do anything. Right. Number one. Fair. Um, and, and so once, once they saw it, once they began to look at the letter itself, the language in the letter, and it didn't say, we don't want you, and it didn't say, we're not big enough for you, it just said, we don't have everything you say you want for this specific project. And that goes back to the wording of the letter and how it had to be really creatively smart. Secondly, I think um, standing in the, in the tech park war room, watching that age group of people um, all with their, their phones out texting and tweeting and Snapchatting and all those other things I don't know how to do, but seeing the, 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 the looks on their faces and the emotion in that room and then watching the board as, as, as all of this was being captured in social media and shown to them as who was saying what in real time, it really was an, one of the most uplifting things I have ever been a part of in Little Rock because it was people in Little Rock proud of what the Little Rock is that they live in recognizing that we want to make it even better, but then given a reason for other people in other communities, in other ways of life, maybe wanting a different form of life that they didn't know necessarily existed in Little Rock until that day. You know, the letter, the letter says it pretty clearly. After all, you're Amazon. You're smart, sexy, and frankly, incredibly rich. And thanks to our booming business environment, tech-savvy workforce, diverse creative culture, in flourishing downtown, there are a lot of reasons why we'd be great together. I mean, that's pretty direct about All right. those kind of issues. Good. You've made your point. And I appreciate it, and I appreciate your candor. Uh, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that um, you've shared both, uh, uh, you've answered the questions on criticisms, and you've shared the outcomes. And the outcomes, Millie, quite frankly, are very impressive. It's hard to argue against that. Anybody else have questions? Would anybody like to ask them a question? Yes, sir. We'll wait for the microphone here. Typically, typically don't need that. There's a, uh, there's a little company up in Bentonville that uh, some people consider to be a competitor of uh, Amazon. Uh, they were probably delighted at the outcome of this, but I'm curious, did they reach out to say thank you or anything of that nature? I, I'm curious. Well, they didn't call me. <laughs> I actually... I actually am on a board with someone from one of the Walmart executives. I was with them on I thought you were talking about J.B. Hunt or Friday. <laughs> and she actually said, she just said anecdotally, again, that a lot of people there really were, thought it was cool. I mean, they just thought it was cool. That's a great question. Um, you know, we're a small state, and, and we have precious few national and international headquarters. Um, and I'll just suffice it to say that they and other national headquarter facilities had already been made aware of what we were getting ready to do and why we were doing it and, and not how we were doing it because what we didn't want was to put anyone in a difficult position of doing anything other than smiling and thinking, man, that was a pretty darn good idea. Sure. You know, I'm, I'm a fairly new Arkansan, and uh, about six months to date. And, and I think the bottom line to this is the people of this community, you guys are awesome. And, and I think what you've done here is remarkable. I've lived a lot of places, and I, I've often talked about here what I call the Arkansas effect and the willingness for people to help. Four of our greatest assets are sitting right in front of this room, and I'm, and I'm delighted to know each of you. But, you know, great job. This is awesome. You know, keep doing it. Proud to be a part of it. Yeah. There. There was a there was a time the night before there was a time the night before 
where you know we had we we had this hope for the momentum and what we would hope. We never expected it, frankly, to be as big as it is and has been. Uh, but then there was this real worry. I think all of us had. What if this thing flops? <laughs> what what's going to happen then? And and thankfully that did not happen, and just the opposite happened uh, multiple times over. But I, I will say that that group of 20, 25 people who had been a part of this process all had this kind of a gut cincher where, okay, this is going to happen tomorrow. Let's hope it goes well. Yeah, I feel your pain. Okay, uh, Ms. Abrams, you've got a question over here. Hold on, wait for the microphone coming at you, Annie. Jay, I know I've followed the chamber a long time. It's a regional chamber. And may I know we've had difficulty in our paying our fair share of making sure that our regional chamber is able to do the job that is your mission. In the 25, how many of the cities that are members of the regional participated? And my concern is that and I love Little Rock because that's why I've been here 86 years. My concern was it was almost like where I watched digitally people looking for a mate, you know, the people who are looking for a husband or wife on television and they sell themselves. I was trying to figure out were you really looking for a mate that would be good not just for Little Rock, but you are responsible for regional help for the regional members. And Mayor, we've had trouble selling what we invest in the regional chamber of commerce to help us. And my experience has been, people didn't feel like we were getting our money's worth out of you, Jay. Well, they're just not reading the facts of the newspaper, the right newspaper, maybe, or any. <laughs> I, I, there, there are some people who've been critical of the of the investment, but I can tell you, um, to answer that issue, um, um, the city of Little Rock does not have the uh, wherewithal to hire its own economic development team. That, that decision has been made a long time ago. We looked around the country at what others were doing. And so it's really, uh, uh, you know, the investment is much less uh, than it would be otherwise if we were going to be trying to put forth a development team, an economic development team that could match the, the opportunity that we have. I spent uh, a couple of, two or three hours today with Jay and, and uh, the prospective uh, um, uh, locators and and business that wants to be here and so it's really I think part of my job as mayor uh, to be a leader on the issues of economic development along with along with our contractor which is the chamber in this instance and and AEDC and we very specifically and very intentionally recognize that as a very important uh, three-way opportunity for us and it, it, it's only difficult in some sectors some people have been critical of it in the past but, uh, the, I mean, I can show you the numbers. Jay can show you the numbers. Uh, the, the dividends have paid off uh, tremendously. You can go look at the port, and you can see the development we've had out there. You can see uh, Lowe's opening uh, this past Friday. You can see uh, the Bass Pro. You can see the outlet shops. You can see all kinds of things that have been happening from an economic development standpoint that have been a product of, of the work that uh, our economic development team through the chamber and the Metro Alliance has done. Okay. Ms. Annie, I think that's, because I, 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 if you don't mind, I do want to make this no, point. No, go ahead. Because um, you, you bring up a really, good, a really good point. So prior to February of 2005, Central Arkansas didn't compete for economic development projects. Who competed was Little Rock or North Little Rock or Hot Springs or Conway or, or what have you. And so it wasn't until um, Bill Clark and Joe Ford, based upon what Altel had seen from their expansion, especially into the Southeast, and dealing with new regional economic development entities, recognized that Little Rock and Central Arkansas needed one, because while, while we think of 200,000 people as a, as a pretty large city, across the world, that's nothing. 
that's nothing. We can name cities in China of, of three to 30 million that you've never heard of. And so one of the reasons why regional economic development has been so successful is not because anyone's any smarter than anyone else, other than the fact that we quit marketing Little Rock as a city of 200,000 and started marketing the Metro Little Rock region, a, a, a region of over one million people that from the standpoint of workforce and labor force has a labor shed of over a half a million people and we can talk to companies about the commuting patterns of people coming into Pulaski County and going outside of Pulaski County and where all of these workers are and, and why it's more important to market us as a region at those numbers and getting on radar screens that we would never ever get on otherwise at 200,000 which has led to over $2.1 billion in new capital investment with projects that we've specifically worked, over 15,000 new jobs, over 480 million in new annual payroll coming from those projects, which we have listed. We, we've provided that information publicly over and over and over again. So that is the value of regional economic development. If people want to live in an urban environment in downtown Little Rock, we have that opportunity. If people want to live in a suburban environment like West Little Rock or another smaller community in the, in the, the uh, urban core area, they have that opportunity. But if people want to live on 30 or 40 acres and have a little farm, within 20 to 25 minutes of here, they can do that. So we give people options and choices. The answer to your question in regard to this specific campaign, I actually apologize to our regional economic development community um, the night before we launched, as we were worried about whether it would work or not. I said, tomorrow, you're going to see something that unfortunately we just didn't have time to get consensus around from all of these communities in the 12 counties of the Metro Little Rock region that we're currently operating and, and responsible for from an economic development standpoint. So they did not participate in this campaign only because we didn't have time. But I can tell you that the state received a request from a site location consultant and company last week that specifically asked for responses within the cities of the, met, of the metropolitan statistical area, Little Rock, North Little Rock, and Conway. So while they didn't participate, they're actually going to win from this because the MSA as a whole um, has, is the one that's getting the attention because site locations and consultants don't draw political boundaries. They draw radiuses around the facility that they're looking at either purchasing or building, and they want to know everything there is to know about the quality of place within that radius, the people within that radius, the talent within that radius. That's what makes their lives work. It's not whether it's this county or that county or this city or that city. So that's why regional economic development is so important, not only to what we've been able to accomplish as a region over the last 12 to 14 years, but what we're going to accomplish going forward. Jay, the, uh, and if we've got any other questions, we, we, we can talk yeah, to the folks after. Change. But I've, I've got, I want to ask, and then we're going to conclude because I know we're running out of time. But uh, now that we've got the attention of Love Little Rock, and Millie, I agree with you that people are looking. It's very impressive to see those companies that are checking the websites. Very, I mean, that, that's, that's very impressive. I, I wish we'd have those companies checking the Clinton School website. Um, <laughs> And we don't, but I need to talk to you after that. Um, but saying that, and I'm not talking about major generic issues like schools or crime or other things that, that urban areas deal with. You know, if, so we, if this focus on love Little Rock, what's one thing in Little Rock that you would like to see either fixed, done, added, new, that people, when they say love Little Rock, what would you say, gosh, in the next six months, I would like to see blank. What would that be? You know, I was asked that question just this morning by this international client, except they gave me two. Okay. So can I have two? Sure. Um, after we'd been through the presentation and they had seen uh, everything that we had to offer and why we thought this was the place for them, they said, okay, you've told us all the good things. What are two things that you want to make better? And my first answer was public education because we've been working on 
the four school districts in Pulaski County for many, many years. We want public education to be a choice. You can have all these other choices, that's wonderful and fine, but if public education isn't a choice, then we can't be successful and sustainable long term. The second issue, which is actually related to the first, is public safety. And I said, our public safety is, is being worked on and it needs worked on, just like our public education is being worked on, it needs worked on, and one can actually significantly impact the other if we're in this for the long term. If we have an education that's world class available to every kid in this city and in this county and in this region, that's how we're going to win. That's how crime is gonna go down long term. Yes, we have to deal with, with the issues at hand, but as I explained to them this morning, and I gave them some specifics, we, we have these issues like many other places are, but now let me tell you what we're doing to try to impact them. And that's, to me, what we have to do. What would you say, Mayor? Well, I would say exactly the same thing. I mean, it's education. And if we can, if we can really focus on, on getting kids prepared for school uh, and the families that are, are having children uh, that are, are getting, you know, uh, I mean, I, I talked to Mike Poor uh, on a monthly basis. We, we work together very collaboratively. I asked him how many how many of your kids uh, last year uh, uh, were pregnant in the schools? And he found out for me, he said there were 142 from the ages of 12 to 19. And, and so we have, we have a lot of people bringing kids into the world that are probably not prepared and understanding what, it need, what, it, what is necessary to get them ready to be able to compete. Uh, a child born in poverty hears 30 million words less than a child that is not and is automatically behind, way, way, way behind. And you can statistically show that 70% of them are gonna wind up in, in jail in one form or fashion in the future. So the education issue is critical. And, uh, and then of course public safety, and we're working very, very hard on that. That's my number one obligation is public safety. And so we've got uh, our Little Rock for Life plan that is both a law enforcement tool uh, that we're working on. Uh, we've, uh, we're gonna have about 45 in our November class. We're catching up on the shortage uh, of police officers. Uh, and uh, equally important is the jobs opportunity and education piece of that plan, as well as the blight issue. Uh, uh, I know many of you saw the press conference, hopefully, about our AmeriCorps Neighborhood Safety Corps program that's out here in our hotspots that's doing a variety of things in terms of uh, the issues of safety and security in those neighborhoods, um, um, fixing up the houses, and, and then making them more energy efficient as well. And that's a great program. We have 30 people working on that. We still have jobs available, by the way, uh, through AmeriCorps. And so um, that's just one item of many um, that um, we're, we're working on. Uh, and so that's, you know, you work that in tandem with the education issue, and I, I think that it's going to spell good things for Millie, us in the future. what do you think? I'm going to get specific, so you don't, you don't have to be, they, they talk crime and education. I'm, I, 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 my one wish uh -huh. would be that our city could become confident about the great city we already are as a populace. I feel like if we could become a city of encouragers, a city of positivity, a city of glass half full, like so many of us are, but more vocal about that, I think it would make a huge difference over time. Anything else? Okay, and the two I'm gonna say before we conclude, I, I think to love Little Rock, I think, I hope we get a dental school I think we need it for the rest of the state. I think Arkansas, you know, when you get out in the poorest parts of the country and the, our, of our state where there's no dentists, uh, I think we need a dental school, and I think we ought to work hard at it. And then I think the most historic home in Little Rock, the place where the city was saved, in my opinion, uh, and that is the Terry Mansion. It needs to be restored and marketed is one of the greatest places. It is where the Women's Emergency Committee, when the men have failed, Adolphine Fletcher Terry called out the women. It's time we fix up that house. Thank you all very much for coming, and we appreciate everybody. <laughs>